this morning. That was great. To God be the glory. We got our vendors that dressed up the place. We have our um, makeup artist in the back and skincare specialist that's going to give us some tips and some tricks. But before we do that and eat grub a dub dub, I'm just going to give you a little bit about the word of God. Just a little bit. Won't church you out too much. Because honestly, my voice is done. I don't want to speak after this for like 48 hours. <clears throat> but I am going to just share a little bit um, in Matthew 27, which is all about the crucifixion process of Jesus Christ. Um, he is my main man. If it wasn't for him, I would not be standing here today. Everything you see me do, you po I post on social media. It is because of the anointing on my life and because of the transformation process that he's allowed me to go through. How many of you feel like you have been torn from something or someone, or have not really received a true, clear, um, a true, clear idea of why you went through certain things, just by a, a show of hands. Like, why did I go through that? that? That really messed up the entire course of my life. Like, some things you've been through just kind of like shifted you, and you're wondering, or you're trying to get back to that that their place or that place of purpose or maybe struggling with purpose. We talk, we heard about purpose a lot today. Any Phoenix is being honest, you're struggling with purpose, right? You know you're probably called to do something but you're struggling with like accepting it or accepting who you are or just even trying to get over your past. How many of you kind of feel stuck? Be honest, raise a hand, feel kind of stuck, right? Kind of stuck like what, what do I do from here? I went through that. Now I'm here, but where is this going to take me, right? And we talked a lot about Christ, and we always want to bring it back to him full circle. <clears throat> so I want to just identify this word, torn, which means to be separated, in despair, lacerated, slit, ruined, or cracked. And the word tear means to be pull apart, uh, put into pieces, rend, or ripped, Right? Sometimes we go through some things and it, we, we go through some things that tears us to pieces, right? Rips us apart, breaks our heart, and we're kind of left for dead or quite with a question mark on our hearts. And the mind, will, and emotions can be torn apart or not aligned with each, with each other, which is your soul. I heard somebody say earlier that you can be saved, but your soul may need deliverance. And I do find that to be true. You can accept. Jesus Christ, but still needs to go through a healing process. So some things in your soul can line up with the will of God, right? Your mind. Um, uh, when we think about the word will, we think about someone who's going to die and they're going to leave their will, they're going to leave their property, their money, their finances over to someone else. But that is, to me, called the permissible will. That's you saying, I, Shanice, am going to give Charlene, going to give Marlene this, that, and the third. Not saying that God told me to, but that's just my will, what I want to do. And so um, we're living in a time where we really want to know the will of God for our lives. I personally believe that it is really the only way to live a fulfilling lifestyle is really knowing that you are living because God said to do this God told me to do this conference I didn't just wake up I really prefer to be in Jamaica right now to be quite frank <laughs> on a little trip if you really want to think about it but God said I need you to birth the conference because this is going to be the first of many and, I, and how God works with me is with demonstration he gives me instruction go here go there do this do that plant the seed build it uh, grow it call them do that acts uh, submit obey all these different things and bring it full circle to show me. He likes to, he likes to give me vision. For me, I, I'm a hands-on person. And so if God talks to me a lot, a lot, a lot, I may not get it. So he has to send me or tell me how to do it. And so that's why we're really here today. It was a fight to get here today. I've never experienced so much warfare, confusion, mentally. I don't even know what it was. It was massive. But I just thank God that this is his will. And it is done. It is done. And we're going to talk about what's behind the veil. But before I talk about what's behind the veil, 
there are three functions to the mind because it's so important that our mind first and foremost lines up with the will of God and the mind is defined as, as a, is the intellectual portion of you the element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world and their and their expansions to think and to know the truth um, their consciousness understanding their own intelligence their own power their mentality their perception of others and themselves their judgment clarity and sense if in your mind mind, you don't have clarity about who you are, what you're doing, it can keep you in a state of confusion, or it can cause confusion, or you can lack identity, right? So we want to make sure that in our mind, our thinking, because there's three functions to the mind, thinking, feeling, and wanting. Ooh. And when I thought about thinking, I thought about, I thought about um, being intentional, and I started to think about the word thinking. I started to think about being intentional. Like, are the thoughts that I'm thinking the thoughts that God has towards me? Are the thoughts that I have about myself, how I feel about myself, how I feel about my friends, my family, my purpose, my church, and all these different people? Um, people, is this where God wants me to be? You know, and we want to make sure that we're just not wasting time. Time is just going and going and going, and it's going pretty fast. And a lot of people are wasting time, right? And because they don't really have a, a, a logic or a thought process of where God wants them to be, right? Forget obedience because you need the mind to obey God. You need to have a made up mind to obey God. So before you can even get to the place of obedience, you want to really um, consider God. Because a lot of people don't consider his, his way. They're, they get up and they're like, I want to do it like this because why? The three functions, desire and feeling. We have these desires. The Bible talks about God giving us a desire. But if we walk with him, then he's the one that brings those desires to pass according to his will. And then we talk about feelings which um, sometimes God, and I kind of switch it a little bit, sometimes God will allow us to, or someone, Shade was here, and she's like, but I don't really want to, but I'm going to do it anyway. And a lot of times God has called some of us to do something, and we're doing it, and we're kind of struggling with that thing that God calls us to do. And then we allow our feet before God. And I want to talk about behind the veil just a little bit because... Um, Sometimes we don't really know what's on the other side. Sometimes we don't really know what it is that God really wants to do because either we don't wait the 14 years, the seven years, the six years, we don't give God a chance, <clears throat> or we get mad with God. We be tight. Like, why would you let me go through that? Why did I have to go through that? Why me? 17 years of being in the same relationship, 14 years of being sexually abused, two years of being this, that, and the third. Why, why did you allow me to go? But there's something behind that veil of what you went through. And I want to share a little bit about this man named Jesus in Matthew 27, 1. And I'm only going to read a few verses and share a little bit about what was behind the veil for myself and transition. Uh, Matthew 27, 1. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans on how Jesus, on how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. They bound him. Does anyone know what it means to be bound? Do you know what it means to be bound? Shout it out. Anyone. What does it mean to be bound? Restricted, limited. Limited is, is the word that came to me as I thought about what it means to be bound. The enemy had a plan for Jesus to keep him bound. Little did he know he was going to be the restorer of the breach. But he wanted to keep him bound. And see, this is what the enemy likes to do. Keep you behind the veil. He likes to keep you behind the veil. And he likes to make you feel as though this seed or whatever it is that we, we talked about earlier, all these traumatic experiences and all these things that happen to us. And he likes to keep us in that stuck place, in that limited place, after he allows something to happen to you that keeps you bound, right? And so we, we, we're looking at Jesus now. They're trying to set him up. And I want to tell you how the enemy tried to set me up before I go into uh, verse 27. The enemy tried to set me up when I was, when I was uh, a little girl from the age of 7 to 12. I was molested by several family members. My mom is in a room she didn't know until it all came out in the end. Because what the enemy likes to do is put you in a situation where he can close your mouth and 
steal your voice. If he can steal your voice through sexual abuse or any kind of, um, you know, attack or, or, or depression or some, some type of traumatic experience, anything, even if it's something simple like a really bad breakup, because we all got that one guy or that one girl, you know, that, that makes us plunge deep, right? And the enemy planted these seeds when that time of me um, being molested and my voice was shut and I started to take on a new identity, planting the seeds of depression, uh, promiscuity. Um, I mean, I could go on with the list of lists of how many people that I slept with, of how many men that I gave myself over to because of low self-esteem because I thought that that's what I was supposed to do because I was introduced to sex for so young. Right, And so this low self-esteem came in, depression came in, it opened up the door to sadness, to fear, to alcohol, to weed, disappointments, insecurity, rejection, loss of my voice, not having a clear vision. The veil is over my eyes. Second Corinthians 4.4 uh, 4 says that the God of this earth blinds the eyes of the unbelievers. The God of this earth is Satan. And what he does is he feeds on our desires and our wants. We want to be loved. We want a man. We want the eye candy. We want to look fly. We want to go to the club. I did all of it. Bottle service, dress nice, chill with all the fly girls, planted the seed, and it was opening the door more and more and more. But I didn't know what was on the other side, which was seeds of fruitfulness which was seeds of fruitfulness. And while the enemy was trying to block me, while the enemy was trying to block me, God wanted to give me a fruitful life like he wants to give to some of you today. He wants to give you a fruitful life. There's something behind the veil for you. Today, then, I stood as the girl that, you know, made the money, went to the clubs, had the, you know, the fast life, the good life is what we call it. And today, behind the veil, I'm an author. Today behind the veil, I'm a wife. Today behind the veil, I'm a founder. Today behind the veil, I'm a makeup artist. Today behind the veil, I'm a mentor. Today behind the veil, I'm a mother-to-be. Today behind the veil, I'm unstoppable. Today behind the veil, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Behind the veil. Yes, I never knew that I was going to be someone's wife with my husband. I never knew that I was going to be someone's wife because I had many husbands, as John Ford talks about, right? Many soul ties, as we talked about before. And I never knew that behind the veil on the other side. I remember at the age of 19 years old, I was at Church of God with my mom. And I, 19 or 21, this was the turning point. This was when the seeds were going deeper. Now, we, now we're talking about roots. There were roots of rejection, roots of depression, roots of alcoholism, roots. I remember a woman of God said to me, she said, if you would, she just walked up to me in the church. I didn't really know much about prophecy or what, what have you. And she was like, if you change your life and you, no, if you give your heart to the Lord, the Lord said he will give you like a paraphrasing, like a life you would never believe. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. When I'm 40 and I cut my hair and I don't want to turn up no more. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Went back out into the streets and life got worse for me. Worse, worse, worse. And I hit rock bottom. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait until it's too late that you try God. Don't wait till you hit rock bottom and there's no one to get you up. There is something behind the veil for each and every single one of us. Some of you are already being unveiled. Some of you, the world is getting ready to know. You're getting ready to explode in the kingdom of God. Some of you may have been forgotten or rejected, but there's a glory that is on your life that God is getting ready to reveal. And there's some of you that are still in that place called stuck and limited and you don't really know what the next move is for you. You're not really sure of what purpose really looks like for you. But we talk about relationship here at Chosen Faces, relationship with Christ. This man in Matthew 27, as it reads, then the governor's shoulder, show, uh, soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his heads. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail the king of Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. This is what the enemy wants to do for some of our lives. This is what he wants to do. He wants to torment and torture. 
I've never experienced demonic torment the way I've experienced it in this season. And God said, I have uh, had to allow you to feel what some of these women that you're getting ready to encounter feel. And it has been tormenting. And I'm like, God, you have got to lift this thing because it's a lot. And at times I wasn't sure who or what I was feeling or who, you know, this person is that I would have to encounter. But I know in this room today that some of you have been tormented by some things from your past or even things that you are going through currently and you're saying, you know, probably I'm not even considered God and just considered your own way and your own path out. But there's something behind the veil, the veil. And there's some of you who are already in Christ. You are already in Christ. And God is saying, come higher, come deeper, because behind the veil is a greater glory. There's another dimension. There's another layer of you that God wants to reveal. And he wants to give us seeds of fruitfulness. According to Psalms 1-3, the person that is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in, 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 in due season, whose leaves does not wither, shall prosper. We are in a season of prosperity, more so in our soul than anything else. We talked about self-care, that internal heart. What, what, is, what, what is your heart clothed with? Where are your motives? Where are your intentions? Where is your mind? Where is your will? Where are your desires? Are they at the feet? of Jesus and today we just want to before just letting you ladies leave from this place want to you know offer you before you know after prophetess Asha comes up just offer you that time of you know praying intimacy with God when we go into this worship and tell God what you feel like you've been torn from maybe it's your original purpose maybe you feel like you was on the straight and narrow and you've been kind of jolted jilted you've been shifted just a little bit or you're not kind of sure you've reached a certain level but now you're like okay where do I kind of go from here what is your purpose? Have you been torn by, you know, a death, a loss, a, a job, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever it is, are you not content? The veil, what the veil truly represents or what it represents before was pretty much when Adam and Eve sinned, there was a veil that was put between God and man because of the nature of sin. <clears throat> But today that veil is broken and we are all granted access to the blood. We are all granted access to Jesus, the one that was tormented and tortured. Okay, and today we want to make sure that we don't we don't let that go over our heads. We don't we don't want to miss the opportunity because we don't know what tomorrow brings. We, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. So we don't force our beliefs and our religion. We just simply share what Christ did for us because he, he did it for everyone essentially whether we deny it or we don't and wherever there is a struggle wherever there is a struggle in your heart or in your soul we, someone talked about obedience and talked about rebellion and all these different things you know and be honest with God. Be transparent with God. I always say, you know, before anyone else, be transparent with the Lord. Tell him how you feel in a reverential way. Reverence him. God, this is, I don't believe some time because I've been waiting for 20 years. Or send someone to, you know, give me a, a story or some kind of, um, you know, a wisdom. Help me. Show me what do I do from here because I feel stuck instead of trying to figure it out yourself and then having to come right back around to square one, right? Going around the mountain. So this message is not long. It's just really about what is on the other side. What is behind the veil? Question yourself. Question, have that conversation with yourself today or when you go home or tomorrow, whatever you do. Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? I remember going to college and uh, when I was 19 years old, I went to Bronx Community College. I wanted to be a nurse. I thought I wanted to be a nurse. I really wanted to help people. And that's what the desire was. I really had this thing like, oh my God, I would watch TLC on Saturdays when my mom would go to work and leave us in the house, the ER emergency thing. And I would love it and I would watch it and I'd be like, oh my God, I want to be a nurse. And then I remember my grandma was a nurse's aide. And she was like, you know, you should be a nurse because they, they make good money. And sometimes people will tell you what to be, what to become and place it on you and you're run with that don't run with what everyone else is doing run with what you know God has called you to do that deep desire that thing that's in on the inside that you can't shake that it's innate okay and I thought that I was gonna be a nurse and I was like 
I don't want to do this. This is like actually hard and I was not good with math. Long story short, after um, two years of going back and forth, I dropped out, got a job as a sales girl. That's how I got into the sales and the commission world and that whole fast life and started making money and realized that I was a business person. But that desire that I had to help people, that nurse was the spiritual nurse that I am, the intercessor that I am and didn't know that it lined up with my spirituality. And so sometimes we're not really sure what to do with the, the de desires that we have but if we commit them to God then he will let you know what's on the other side of the veil amen amen that is just my few words to God be the glory for the testimony on my life 